you're very welcome to our symposium on creating active and livable societies for all. We have a great opportunity to, um, to use the power of health, because everybody's interested in health, to drive urban development uh, agendas. Uh, my job is in a medical school, but I usually uh, tell physicians and nurses and other health providers that they can do more to promote physical activity outside the clinic than they can ever do inside the clinic. Because while they should be um, encouraging and promoting and prescribing physical activity, but that doesn't mean that their patients have a good place to be active or that they know how to do it or that they have support in doing it. So I encourage um, physicians to become advocates for healthy environments, for healthy cities, because that applies as much to the general public as it does to people with uh, clinical situations. So what is this idea of livability? Well, the concept of livability is something that we jumped onto because we realized that when we talk to people about the social determinants of health, everyone goes to sleep. You know, and if we're talking to a transport minister or a transport um, director general or a planning director general about the social determinants of health, I get no reaction at all. But if I talk to them about livability, which they value, um, everyone has a concept of livability. And it, what we've done is just actually said, well, we've, we've, we see that as a social determinants of health, because we say a livable community is safe and socially cohesive, has affordable housing, uh, but that housing is linked by transport, walking and cycling infrastructure to all the things that you need for daily living. Now these are the social determinants of health and it also, in our definition of livability, we've incorporated sustainability, environmental sustainability, because unless a community is sustainable, you know, we've got no survival on the planet. So our definition is very comprehensive because we noticed it speaks to the people who we're trying to influence. And I've just given up on trying to be a public health academic who just sticks to public health to one that's trying to influence the people who create the city, that create the conditions for good health. And so to me, my focus is on what they want and time my research to what their needs are so that I can actually achieve what I want without actually even mentioning health, which is a really funny way of doing it, but that's what I try and do. Well, as we're talking about making more active, healthy, walkable, uh, livable cities, um, I'm going to emphasize more what we're doing with the research. We've certainly learned a lot about how to make walkable, livable cities, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're using what we've learned. So we're, we've been encouraging researchers to be more involved in communicating their findings to people who can use them and put them into practice and policy. Okay. So we've got a really great data set that's 10 years long and we can trace the people over that period and we found that they've got a 40% reduction in hospital admissions due to having their houses improved over the last decade. The data set includes the housing data from the local council and the hospital admissions for the older people and for all of the population. So the results were similar for the total population as well. So we reckon we've saved um, the NHS a couple of, couple of million pounds in hospital admissions over the 10 year period. Well, Everyone globally is talking about livability. So the OECD talks about it, um, local government authorities talk about it, state governments talk about it, you know, mayors of cities talk about it, but no one's really defining it or measuring it. So what we decided we would do is, first of all, we would define it through a health lens, which incorporates all the things that I just mentioned. But in addition to that, what we've done is said, well, okay, well, let's measure it. How can you measure it? So we broke down all the domains of livability. We haven't measured them all, actually, because it's a little bit challenging. The ones we've measured are the built environment ones, because that we can locate those spatially. Uh, we haven't mentioned social cohesion, mainly because we think that that may need to be um, require some surveys and we wanted to create one that was more spatial and not that's not important it's just we haven't and we haven't yet don't we haven't populated the domain on sustainability 
Philippines. There is so much happening in practice that we still don't know. And perhaps the best evidence is yet to come because it's been implemented but it has not been well evaluated. So bringing together the evidence that the traditional peer review literature provides is not enough. We have to understand what's being implemented too. I think we are making progress, but definitely we need to, to speed up this, this process. But, uh, I think we have to listen to each other more often and improve our communication. Uh, and using proper language, avoiding jargons, and being more clear about what we, what are, what are, what are the results in terms of research. But we also have to understand what, what is really relevant for policymakers and practitioners. So, yeah, I'm optimistic. I think we're making good progress, but definitely there's a long way to, to go. Thanks very much for taking the time to listen to our video summary of the symposium.